giving you a voice and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Best of the West. This week, we'll be looking at all of the West FRC events from last week. Look at the top 10 as voted in the FRC Top 25 poll. Look ahead to the week four action and talk about our favorite and least favorite parts of deep space. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Clint Ott. I'm Bryce Coucher. And I'm Aiden Ferrer. Before we kick things off, guys, we're gonna, we've got a fun giveaway that Tyler's going to talk about. Literally a fun giveaway. So um, as it is a uh, fun mug by our friends at Redfish Robotics. So uh, if you're interested in checking these out, by the way, they just put them up on Amazon. You can find it at tinyurl.com forward slash Redfish Robotics. Uh, we're actually going to, I'm going to switch up the keyword. We've had the same one all night because I've been very lazy, but we'll do uh, BOTW for best of the West for the keyword. So as people start putting in a uh, fun mug, guess what? It's changed. Now you got to put in BOTW. Uh, but yeah, we'll do the drawing for this near the end of the show. Make sure you click the follow button uh, in order to be eligible to win along with that keyword. And if you'd like to have five chance, five times chance to win, uh, then you can go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button. You can do so for free with Trich Prime, which is for a few bucks a month. Helps support our streams and keep us loud, live, and independent. So enjoy Best of the West and good luck with the giveaway. We get our own keyword. I feel so special. Yeah, guys. We're, you That's know awesome. we're the big time. If we hey, keyword. there we go. <laughs> All right, um, so we've got a lot of action to cover this week, so let's hop right into it. Bryce, what happened up in the Pacific Northwest? All right, up in Yakima, the Pacific Northwest Sun Dome District event played host to some strong offensive performances in the qualification rounds. Chief among them was another outstanding showing by the event favorite, 2910 Jack in the Bot, who in their best match scored 16 game pieces by themselves. At the end of quals, they were in the top seed with a qual record of 11-1-0 and six more ranking points than the second-seeded team, of 4692, the Metal Mallards. In the Alliance selections, Jack and the Bot picked up 5803 Apex Robotics as their first selection, probably in no small part because the two showed that their level 3 climbs were compatible in their last qual match together, and picked up 2926, the Robo Sparks, on the backside of the draft. The trip to the finals was relatively uneventful for the number one alliance, as only one match had a winning margin under 40 points. In the finals, they would face off against the number three alliance, consisting of alliance captain and Fosbury flap specialist 40, 6443 Aimbot, and their partners 2522 Royal Robotics, and 7776 MVR, the rookie team. The first final went heavily to red as the Blue Alliance's counter-defense strategy did not slow down the number one alliance's fast cycles with a final score of 93-65. to 65. Finals match two, however, was much closer with Aimbot focusing their efforts on defending 2910 with some moderate success. Apex fell while attempting to climb their level three climb, leading to a score of 78 to 52. So congratulations to the winning alliance of 2910 Jack in the Bot, 5803 Apex, 2926 the Robo Sparks, and a huge congrats to 4980 the Canine Crusaders for winning the Chairman's Award and their first banner as a team, as well as 6443 Aimbot for their Engineering Inspiration Award and the Double, sil double Silver Kling Bling. Uh, down here in Oregon, the uh, Clock Mystic County. Clackamas Academy District seemed to be following a similar path of predictability as Sundom during the qualification rounds. The top seeds all being filled with the event favorites, most notably 1540 the Flaming Chickens, who took the top spot after also having seeded first last week at the Wilsonville event. 1540's first selection went to the second seeded team, 1425 error code zero, and the pairing looked strong in the quarterfinals, but this was largely where the predictability ended. Also in the quarterfinals, the 
second alliance containing 4488 Shockwave and 2471 Teamine Machine was up against the number seven alliance, whose captain 3674 the Cloverbots took the bold strategy of selecting a defense bot 3673 the Cyborg Seagulls as their first pick and used the second pick to add 3636 the Generals. In spite of the fact that the seventh alliance received a red card in the first match for strategically tipping an opposing robot, the Cloverbot's brand new level 3 climber and the Cyborg Seagull's show-stopping defense carried the alliance into the semis. Then in semifinals, the surprises continued as the number one alliance went up against the fourth alliance of 2898 the Flying Hedgehogs, 6845 Riverbots, and 4060 Bearcat Robotics, and they lost in consecutive matches. The first match was due in large part to a dead partner, and the second match was very close with some penalty points making the difference. So finals consisted of an unlikely showdown between the number seven in blue and the number four alliance in red. In the first match, the Flying Hedgehogs overextended their arm and fell over during the Sandstorm period, while the drivers were unaware. And the match subsequently fell to the blue with a score of 68 to 54. The second match was incredibly close throughout its duration, both alliances functioning well on offense and defense, until 3673 rammed into 6845, knocking them on their side with 20 seconds remaining. Then 36-36 descored a hatch and cargo from the rocket, and at the end of the match, the live score showed the Red Alliance in the lead despite a downed robot. But when the final scores were shown, it was a 66-65 to victory for the Blue Alliance. So congratulations to 36-74 the Cloverbots, 36-73 Cyborg Seagulls, and 36-36 the Generals, especially 36-73 and 36-36 for taking home their first Blue Banners in the history of their teams. Additional congrats to 3024, my favorite team. Yes, that's their name, uh, for winning the Chairman's Award and 568 Nerds of the North for Engineering Inspiration Award. I got to give a shout out to that alliance just for being all 36 everything. Like that's that's some coordination right there. Made it interesting to read that all, but <laughs> here we are. Oh, you Survivors. know that uh, MC game announcer duo must have hated that because <laughs> that's oh yes, you're gonna trip up at some point. Well, at the third San Francisco Regional, we saw 43 teams at San Ignatius College Prep this Saturday and Sunday, with two teams from Turkey, one from the Netherlands, one from Hawaii, and the other 39 representing the great state of California, nine of which represented the city by the bay itself. Of course, there were a couple teams that stuck out from this colorful crowd. Most everyone was eager to see both 254 the Cheesy Poofs and 971 Spartan Robotics debut their robots for the 2019 season. Over the course of 11 matches, these two powerhouses showed their stuff, but with a tie and a loss, 254 wound up taking the third seed, outranked by 604 Quicksilver, both with a ranking average of 2.63, but 604 gaining an edge with 12 more cargo points, and 971 had an average of 3.27, putting them in first. Spartans didn't want to play without their buddies in blue, however, and opted to take 254 through Elims, a dynamic partnership with six wins together, and picked up San Francisco's 5700 Soda Cyber Dragons as their third. 604 went with 115 MVRT and 6418 The Misfits, also from San Francisco. Continuing this trend of San Franciscan second picks, 649 M Set Fish captained the third alliance, picking up 5499 The Bay Orangutans and 4159 Cardinal Botics. Though the quarterfinals played out fairly standard, the semifinal, semifinals even, saw an upset when the third alliance captained by 649 overthrew the second alliance led by 604 after taking the semifinal set to three matches. With limited wild cards on the line and only one pre-qualified team, everything was on the line for 5700 and 4159, two sister teams who had spent nearly all season working with one another. In only two finals matches, it was the number one alliance who came up on top, taking the matches 94 to 64 and 88 to 42. Congratulations to 971 and 254 for their seventh successful team up and to 5700 for bringing home San Francisco's FRC's first blue banner. 649 and 5499 also earned the two wild cards the event offered. A huge congratulations to them as well. The awards competition was fierce as ever with a rookie all-star going to 7419 Tech Support, Engineering Inspiration awarded to 6814 Ellipse. And though 604 streak of SF Finals may have come to an end, they're surely looking to rebuild a new one with their 10th Chairman's win, their first one since 2016. Can't wait to see you all in Houston. All right. 
down at Flagstaff, Arizona, we welcome teams from across the central and western U.S. and Mexico to the Arizona North Regional this weekend. The teams battled through 89 rough-and-tumble qual matches to see how they measured up. After furthering, further improving upon their Week 1 performance in El Paso, it was 118, the Robonauts, who took the top spot by an impressive .7 ranking score over the second-ranked but also undefeated 2478 Westwood Robotics. Both undefeated undefeated teams partnered up along with 5059, the Midnight Cicadas. The number one alliance took an unconventional three offensive robot approach to their first quarterfinal. After coming out ahead by only two points, however, they moved back to the tried and true two offense, one defense for the rest of the tournament. With that strategy, the number one alliance was able to work through the quarterfinals and their semifinals against the fourth alliance. The other side of the bracket, however, was Upset City. In quarters, six beat three and seven upset two. In the semifinals, it was the seventh alliance that came out on top after three back and forth matches that included an interesting double yellow card in match two for damage inside the frame perimeter. With the final set at one versus seven, the Robonauts and Westwood saw serious defense for pretty much the first time in the playoffs. Team 4565 Skyline Robotics, Team 2403 Plasma Robotics, and Team 60, the Bionic Bulldogs, just couldn't stand up to the pressure of the top seeds. In back-to-back -back matches of 88-52 to and 73-70, to the number one alliance closed it out, finishing an undefeated tournament for both 118 and 2478. Congratulations to them, and also to the rookie all-star winner, 74-24 Sin City Robotics, Engineering Inspiration Award winners, Team 16-22 Team Spider, and Chairman's Award winners, 64-13 Degrees of Freedom. Well, down in Santa Clarita, 36 teams duked it out for the first title of Los Angeles North Champions. With teams like 599 Robodox, 696 Circuit Breakers, 1868 The Space Cookies, 2659 Robo Warriors, 3512 Spartatronics, 5805S Embly Required, and 5818 Riviera Robotics, it was anyone's game going to this competition. Taking the first seed was Team 6560, Charging Champions, looking to turn things around after their semifinals exit as third pick of the fifth Del Mar Week 1. Joining them would be 5818 Riviera and 2429 La Canada Engineering Club, ready to take on the eighth alliance of 2584 Flame of the West, 691 Project 691 Robotics, and 2404 TNT. After substituting in 7042 Poly Robotics, the 8th Alliance was able to turn things around this Herculean matchup, taking the quarterfinal set to three matches, which they would eventually win. Not only did they make it through the quarters, but the semifinals as well, besting the 4th Alliance on their way to the top. On the other side of the bracket, we saw another upset with Alliance 7 led by 6060 Circuit Serpents and partners 599 and 5453 Red Comet from Shenzhen. Overthrowing Alliance 2 of 696, 3863 Panther Botics, and 3925 Circuit of Life. Things were looking a little spooky for the high ranking alliances, but Alliance 3 of none other than 1868 The Space Cookies, 6803 High Panda from Shanghai, and 2659 Robo Warriors cleanly coasted through eliminations, meeting up against the 8th Alliance in the finals. In these matches, it was the Cookie Panda Warriors seizing victory against the Flaming Robotics Project taking finals 1 51 to 42 and finals 2 67 to 47 both 2584 and 691 walked away with wild cards while 7645 NKMTC from Taipei got rookie all-star and 2429 Lacanada Engineering Club won engineering inspiration congratulations to them along with 1868 the space cookies on their double gold cling bling that's right they got chairmans along with their event win making it a two banner event for them and doubly punching their ticket to Houston all right, so we had five events in the West and some Western teams playing other places. Um, so we've got the top 10 teams in the West as voted in the FRC Top 25 poll. Um, and I think this one's going to come with a big shocker. I think for the first time in a while, in a week that they played, it was not the Cheesy Poos who ranked number one. It was Team what? 971 Spartan Robotics. So um, the Cheesy Poos dethroned by the community, uh, well-deserved by 971, in my opinion. They played great. I love their robots. Super fast, super light, um, and super small on top of the platform. So that's really cool. Yeah, that was crazy. 
Yep. Um, so rounding out the rest of the top 10, 29, 10, Jack and the Bot, uh, no surprise there. They're a great team. 604 Quicksilver, 2478, 1540, 649, 115, 5059, and 1425. Yeah. Any surprises there, guys? Uh, I think it's a little impressive, actually, how many of these teams were at SFR. We got Spartans, Poofs, uh, Quicksilver all in the top five. Uh, M said fish and MVRT were both crazy good. So SFR alone's taken half of this top 10, which is pretty good. I'd like to see wow. them take more in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce. Yeah, the, yeah. The big thing people I was missing up here was uh 36, 74, the clover bots. Uh, they work really close with 24, 71 and they've been up and coming, but they shouldn't be uh, unknown to anybody. They were finalists on their division last year in Houston, and uh, they captained their alliance from the seventh seed after ranking 13th and not getting picked all the way to a uh, victory this weekend. So it's a little too bad they're not up there, but at the same time, I kind of understand how people haven't seen them yet. Yeah, I was a little surprised that uh, 50-59, the Midnight Cicadas, were able to make the top 10 as the second pick of that 118-2478 uh, alliance. But, uh, you know, if you're with good teams, you get noticed, get voted. So we're uh, about halfway through the qual. Well, we are halfway through the qualifying season here in the West. Um, and all three of us have seen Deep Space play, you know, in person for the first time after this weekend. Before we move into the second half, I just real quick want to get your guys' impressions on the game. What do you like? What do you dislike? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things to like about this game, and defense is definitely one of the bigger ones. Um, but after watching the event this weekend in person i think that a uh, high-speed ramming is starting to become a significant issue uh essentially with the scoring locations being up high and there being no protected zone and also no rule about high-speed ramming basically if you're a smart defense bot you can intentionally knock over robots without being called for it it's essentially if you can hit them once hard enough that they go over then you're in the clear and uh, I'm not sure that's how it should be. I don't even know if it would require a rule change to fix this problem. Maybe just uh, the way that refs are addressed, and maybe they could bring it up in the drive team meeting. But to me, uh, it's a little concerning. Yeah, uh, I think this game is really interesting conceptually. I, I really do enjoy the concept of like the hatch panels and cargo. You need one to score the other, but the reverse isn't true. Um, I think that's really nice. I think just watching the gameplay unfold as as the weeks go on, we're seeing a lot of the same old story with defense. Um, I think a lot of people are starting to fall out of love with it um, because there there are limitations, but I'm wondering if there's enough. Um, we're seeing a lot of match play kind of go the same way. Um, alliances are kind of going either which way, really, when, when people play um, because you can have eighth. Uh, seed overthrowing the first seed just because they play defense really well. And some of these alliances are bringing in broken robots that just play defense and they're doing great. It's like, it's really crazy to see a little more than a drive train doing so much work, um, which kind of brings back memories of 2017 with, uh, with the passive gear loaders who would do nothing else. Right. It's not the most engaging gameplay, and I also think that teams that are doing really high level engineering aren't being rewarded as much for it um, just because they're running into a lot of problems with how the game is balanced. So uh, I have mixed feelings still. We'll see how champs plays out. We'll see how the rest of the weeks play out. Um, I'm optimistic, but cautious. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of like the fact that, you know, kind of a lower capability robot can contribute immensely to any given elimination Alliance. Oh yeah. You know, it's great. We get into some of these like very shallow events and, you know, at some point, you know, your th is your third partner really doing anything? Well, your third partner can truly be the MVP of your alliance if they stop more, like, if they stop more balls on the opponent's side from being scored than they were able to score on your own side. Yeah, so, we've seen partners win because of their defensive capabilities. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I just want to get your quick thoughts. Uh, we got three more weeks of qualifying action here in the West, so let's go ahead and dive right into what's going on week four up in the Pacific Northwest. All right. We've got the West Valley District event 
uh, coming up here, and it doesn't look to be incredibly stacked, but lots of people will still be tuning in to see the Pacific Northwest Powerhouse 2046 bare metal compete for the second time this season. They're only robot so far in the Pacific Northwest District to complete a rocket by themselves, and I'm eager to see if they'll be able to do it more consistently now that they've got more time and for tuning and practice. Other teams to watch out for at this event are 2557 the Soda Bots, 3223 Robotics of Central Kitsap, and winners of the Mount Vernon District event, 4513 the Circuit Breakers. Glacier Peak is also going on this weekend, and it looks to have a fairly full top end, but the clear favorites going in are last week's winners, 2910 Jack and the Bot. But both of their previous first picks, 2930 the Sonic Squirrels and 5803 Apex Robotics, will be in attendance. So they will be likely duking it out in the qualification rounds. Of course, that's not all. Multiple event finalists will be gunning for redemption, including 2522 Royal Robotics and 1983 Skunkwork Robotics. Other teams to watch will include 2018 Houston finalist 4911 the Cyber Knights and 2017 Houston champions 2976 the Spartabots. Well, on Davis this weekend, California will see what may be its largest event all season. 61 teams piling into UC Davis to take on what could be the last competition for some team seasons, while others are just getting started in week four. Looking to defend their win streaks last season, as well as from two weeks ago, our team 1678, the Citrus Circuits, and 1323 Madtown Robotics, joined by their CVR Alliance partners, 7663 Sleuth Robotics. 973 Graybots will be in attendance after their early victory at OCR, but there's loads of teams hungry for this victory, like 1072 Harker, finalists at CVR against the Sour Town Alliance, 3250 Kennedy Robotics finishing in the semifinals at OCR, 5507 Robotic Eagles, who recently capped in the fourth alliance at SFR. There's teams like 701 Robovikes, 2551 Penguin Empire, 5419 Natural Disasters, and 5458 Digital Minds, who will all certainly be gunning for one of the many wild cards this event may offer. We've seen some of these rookie teams as well, which I guess makes them a little less rookie, but first year nonetheless, in teams like 7529 Mulan from China, who recently won Rookie All-Star at Great Northern Regional, and 7663 Sleuth Robotics, who recently won their first event ever at CVR two weeks ago. Joining them, 7802 Dust Devils from Dayton, Nevada, and 7870 Robohawks from Reno, Nevada. All right, out here in the Mountain West, Denver University's Ritchie Center will host the Colorado Regional this weekend. After last year's Texas invasion, local teams will welcome a much more locally competitive event this year. Making their debut this weekend after being grounded by last week's blizzard, Team 1339 Angel Botics will finally get to see their robot hit the carpet. Last year's Galileo winners, 3374, and Carver finalists, 4944, also look to make their season debut fruitful this weekend. Team 1726, 1561, 1410, 4499, 3293, and 2996 all showed exceptionally strongly in their first week, their first events this season, but are still looking to grab their first winner's trophy of the year. 624 has already played in two first in Texas district events this year and won both of them as the first pick of the second alliance. The target this week, however, will likely hang on the back of 1619, who has seated first at this event each of the last four years, with a solid regional win in Oklahoma, looks to be the team to beat out this weekend in Colorado. Monterey Bay out in California at Seaside High School will go down this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, providing some late weekend viewing for those of you at home. While none of the teams on the list will jump out at you, there are some solid teams headed into Seaside this weekend. 3128, the Aluminum Narwhals are making a splash again after a finalist run on Newton last year. Though their season kickoff in San Diego didn't end as well as they'd like, their robot handles cargo and panels well, and their level two climb helps differentiate them among, the, among those lacking additional hand points. 1671 made a so solid semifinal run at Central Valley, leveraging a nice cargo game and level three climb. If they can get some more hatch panels going and shore up their climb, they'll definitely be a robot to keep an eye on. Only one team has already qualified for Houston going into this event with 6814 Ellipse's engineering inspiration win yesterday at San Francisco. Rookies 70, 76, 67 also look to have built a great cargo bot this year. If they can find the right partners, they look poised to make a deep run as well. Other contenders at this event might be 2073, 192, 3256, and hopefully, probably my new favorite, I get a new favorite every week, 6822, the Shishka Bots. Nice. I think they won an award for that name at an event recently. Hey, that's uh, a, that's yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you later. 
But uh, further down the California coast, we've got an absolute brawl for sunny SoCal, almost a beach blitz, if you will. The L.A. Convention Center plays host to 56 teams from across California, Arizona, Hawaii, and Chile. This lineup is a doozy. We've got 294 Beach Cities Robotics looking to bounce back after Orange County Regional, along with 330 Beach Bots, who took the blue banner from the same event, as well as their alliance partners, 597 Wolverines. 368 Kikamana is coming in from Honolulu. Honolulu, Hawaii, as 687 The Nerd Herd returns back to California from competing at Arizona North last weekend. 3309 Friarbots coming in hot off their chairman's win earlier in the season, while 3476 Code Orange is already on Cloud9 as they debut this weekend. The 4276 Surf City Vikings may have already qualified. They're looking to improve themselves going into this event before Houston rolls around. 5199 Robot Dolphins took an early exit at Del Mar, but is looking to bounce back going into LAR. Only two rookies here with 74-55, the Narbots from Harbor City, and 78-71, Southgate Robotics. So we'll have to see if Rookie All-Star even gets awarded. But I remain optimistic that it will. Oh, oh he's muted. Oh, that's our first one, isn't it? <laughs> all right. So that is all the Week 4 action we have coming at you this weekend. Uh, before we sign off, though, Tyler, can you tell us who won the fun mug? Absolutely. Do that drawing for that. And the winner is going to be, hey, Lino wins. This, Oh, my. Guys, we have had so many hosts win today. It's re, it's stupid to this point. Oh, but, man. But he Lino, congratulations. He is, That's yeah. So he can't strange. win on his own show, but apparently he wins on this. Uh, we have, have rigged this so hard now. tonight, guys. This is ridiculous. Awesome. All right. Chat. That is all we have time for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all we ask is that you let others know about the show. If you got a few bucks to support the stream, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are stoked to have you here. On behalf of myself, Bryce, Aiden, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you all for tuning in and thank our moderators in the chat. Talk to you next week on Best, Best of the West. Mexico <laughs> is up next. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.